Welcome to Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and today we're going to talk about painting on polycarbonate. So we're going to do a reverse paint job. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our regular Create Text line, but we're going to add a little bit of 4030 that makes it better suited for painting on harder plastics like this. So I already have a piece. This is unscuffed, just wiped down. I have it up here. I did a little bit of frisket film over the top. It cut out a loose set of flames, and we're going to reverse paint this. So we're going to start with our transparent yellow, then we're going to go to our transparent orange, We'll hit it with a transparent red. And lastly, we're going to back it up to really make it pop with our sealer white. So we're going to paint it in reverse. So stick around. I'll show you guys how to do that. Hey, guys. We're back, and we are ready to spray. Uh, like I said before, this is just a unprepped, in terms of scuffing, uh, piece of polycarbonate. The only thing I do recommend is actually wiping it down first before you start to paint. Um, you could wipe it with our 4020 or our 4011. It actually will work as a, as a cleaning agent. Um, other than that, uh, uh, water-based wax and grease remover uh, is kind of what I recommend. Two things, make sure that it's totally dry before you're ready to spray. And, uh, and two, do not use a solvent base because what's going to happen is that solvent-based wax and grease is going to cause a little bit of static electricity. And the last thing you want is a static charge pulling dirt and dust into your paint job. So the, a water-based pre-cleaner will actually neutralize the static, especially when painting in plastic, so that's why I recommend that. And once this is all clean, it's, it shouldn't be contaminated in terms of anything really filthy. So, like I said, we're going to reverse paint this, so I have a little bit of 40-30, right around 10% in my transparent yellow, a little splash of 40-11 reducer just for flow. This is a 0.5 Eclipse, uh, and I'm spraying right around 30 PSI. So what I'm going to do is start with my light yellow, and I'm actually going to leave it a little bit lighter at the tips and darken it as I move to the bottom, because what's going to happen is when I put my white over everything at the very end, it's actually going to make that white a little bit brighter, almost like fading to a, a white hot tip instead of a yellow. So we're going to start spraying. I'm going to pick a spot where I want to make that transition to my orange. So I kind of want the tips to be a little more transparent. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to darken it up kind of in the body of the flame. A little bit darker in the middle here. And I'm, what I'm doing is when I'm not pulling the trigger for paint, I'm still on my air to help just dry this up. So I'm just, even though I'm not spraying any color at all times, I'm moving a little bit of air over the surface just to help dry it up a little bit faster. The key to having this come out very sharp is to make sure that your paint is totally dry before you unmask it. So because I'm blowing air and I'm working lightly, this is already dry. I can already touch this mask, so you can just continue working. You're better off building up your color in light coats than really trying to hammer something on wet and run the risk of it bleeding underneath or, or seeping or just causing some problems. So light coats, build up your color. That's the beauty part of the transparent color. You can slowly work it and you can get a really nice vivid color. So I'm going to continue on getting this where I want it. And then we're going to go to our transparent orange. Okay guys, my yellow is all done. Uh, I dumped that out, and now I'm going to move on to my transparent orange. Now it's mixed the exact same way, about right around 10%, 40, 30. A little splash of 40, 11 just for flow. Uh, what I actually did was I, I dumped the yellow back into the cup that I mixed my yellow, and I went right to my orange. So what I'll do is that'll actually kind of mix together for those first couple passes to kind of give me a blended color. Then I'll dump that out, clean it with a little bit of my airbrush cleaner, and then I'll start with a fresh blast of orange to really richen that up. And then I'll do the same thing when I go to my red. So this is what that looks like. You see it's just starting to fade through the airbrush a little bit, which is exactly what I want to kind of get that gradation going. Instead of being a, a really sharp transition into the orange, that yellow helps soften that a little bit. So I'm going to go through and do exactly what I did with the yellow, just work my way further down. Hey guys, we're back. Again, orange is all dry. 
and uh, we're ready to do the last color, which is the red, the transparent red. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to work down to the bottom. And I did the same thing. I left a little bit of orange, whatever was left after I dumped the color out in my airbrush, just to allow those colors to kind of marry together. So when it starts to run out, what I'll do is go back to my purely concentrated red. I'll dump that and give it a good, quick little rinse. And then I'll continue on. But it's the same idea, just slowly building your color. I want red at the bottom. So I'm gonna keep doing this. And then we'll put our white sailor on. All right guys, we are back. Our red is totally dry. And that's, again, that's key. I can't reiterate that enough. Uh, it's, it's the way you're gonna have the best results is really letting these coats of paint dry in between coats. So, color is all done. And now we are ready to back everything up with our sealer white to make all this pop. Now, the sealer white can be sprayed right out of the bottle with just a little bit of reducer. Um, it's a little bit thicker in viscosity, so you might wanna go maybe 15%. If you're using a small airbrush, again, this is a 0.5. So you kind of just reduce to adjust the thickness of the paint. Um, if you don't have the sealer, which the sealer, like I said, you don't have to add the 4030. We don't want you to add 4030 to the sealer. If you opt for a different white, some of the Createx white, like the semi-opaque white, again, a little bit of 4030 in that paint, a little bit of reducer, and you're ready to go. So we're going to get ready to spray. We're going to cover this whole thing up. I'm not worried about uh, dry spray or anything. I'm putting a nice medium coat over all the artwork and that's really going to push the color through from the back side. You can see I'm a little further back off the panel just because I want to utilize the fan of the airbrush. I'm not trying to get in close. I just want to really allow the fan pattern of the airbrush to do the work for me. coat dry we'll probably do two coats total just to really brighten this up and then we'll get it all taped so you guys can check it out so we'll see you in a minute hey guys we're back in the booth while we're waiting for our other panel to dry we wanted to touch on a topic uh, with another one of our products our silver sealer um, we're gonna do a little fade here, a little little tape out, and what we're gonna do is spray this with our pearl silver. So this is gonna give us the effect. This is gonna give us that pearl, but this color is a little transparent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back it up with our silver sealer, kind of like what we did with the flames with the white, and that's really gonna push that effect forward and really give you the opacity that you're looking for. So we're gonna do a little demo here just to show you guys another easy way where you can just apply one coat of this color and really get that saturation with our silver sealer to back it up. So I did this the same way. This is mixed a little bit of 4030, right around 10%, a little splash of 4011 reducer. So we're gonna go ahead and spray. And this Again, this is prepped the same way. I just wiped this with a little bit of a water-based pre-clean just to kill the static, get any fingerprints off of it. And that's it, it's not scuff, it's, it's uh, just a polycarbonate in its raw form. So we're gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna put our silver sealer behind it so you can still see through. You can still see it's not totally saturated. If I were to hold a light back, you'd be able to see through it. So when we back it up with that silver sealer, probably just one coat, it's gonna make this totally opaque and really push that effect, push that pearl out so it'll give you that maximum depth and that look. Back, our silver is dry and you can see what I was talking about it is very transparent but the effect is very cool so if you were trying to get coverage with that silver you'd have to put a lot of material on and that's gonna do two things it's gonna increase your dry time and it's also going to increase that edge of your graphics and especially when you're doing something reverse painted or or just in general when you're doing graphics you want this edge to be as minimal as possible so 
one coat of that pearl silver mixed with the 4030. Now we're going to go to our Honorborn Sealer Silver, just a little bit of 4011 to reduce for your airbrush. And you guys will see one coat is really going to make this block this right out. So it's going to be really, really bright and it's going to make the color pop. So I already have it in the airbrush. We're going to throw this back up. And you guys can see what that looks like. Same thing, this is a 0.5, 30 PSI, a little, little over 10% reduction. The sealers, again, by nature, they are a little bit thick, so you're gonna have to reduce it just to flow the way you want it. Usually another 5%, so you're right around 15%, is more than sufficient to get that coverage. So you can already see that that blue tape is starting to disappear with this silver sealer and that's what you want knowing that that is going away is going to really push that silver that pearl silver right where you want it without creating a huge huge drop off of graphic tape line Just going through and following my fade. And again, like I said in that other video earlier, I am really trying to utilize the fan of the airbrush. I'm not trying to get really close and tight. I'm really letting that spray far off. So we're gonna let this get dried up. We'll take it off. You guys can check it out. Hey guys, we're back in the booth. Our panels are all dry and all untaped. Uh, we'll start with the silver, the silver panel that we did. Now remember, we did uh, our pearl silver first, and then we backed it up with our silver sealer right here. And that, I think, highlights how well it makes that paint cover. I know we're gonna try to illustrate the transparency of that silver on this panel. Now, as I come down close to the center of the panel, you should see that pencil line disappear. And as I get back to the bottom where I faded it out, you should kind of, I don't know if it's blocked by those color cups, but back up top, you'll see that pencil. I think it's pretty, a pretty good indication of how much you can increase the opacity of the paint just by backing it up, again, because we're reverse painting on something like this, like, like uh, Lexan or polycarbonate, um, with our silver sealer. Um, all of our sealers work very well, and remember the, seal, the sealers themselves don't require the 4030. It's just a little bit of reducer to flow optimally through your airbrush. Uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 PSI is pretty good in terms of what you're spraying. 0.5 is a little bit better tip size, better suited for this product. If you're using a smaller tip size, you're just going to have to reduce it a little bit more, but there is no set standard for that. You just want it to flow and not create dry spray. So again, this is... We'll show you this side too. This is the painted side, but you can see how much brighter and more intense it is just with a little coat of that silver sealer to really push that silver pearl forward more. And, and again, you're, because you're doing that, you're only applying two to three coats of material instead of multiple coats, and you're going to build up big graphic lines and edges, and that's never a good thing. So we're going to go on to our flame panel. Again, you can see this is all completely untaped as well. And one thing I want to touch on is when you're painting something like this where these are unprepped panels, right? This was just raw plastic. We wiped it down with just to get fingerprints off of it. You're going to want to increase your dry times before you start pulling your tape. So really let it dry up. Really let that paint you know, lock up and, and get nice and hard and you will get a nice crisp paint line. Everybody's tendency is to kind of untape it while it's still a little soft thinking that it's going to tear better, you know, and leave a, a cleaner edge, but you're better off letting that paint thoroughly dry so you get a nice, nice crisp clean line. So again, you can see reverse painting. This is the front side and we have a nice fade from the red to the, the white hot yellow tips here and you can see on the back side is what that looks like when we paint it. The, the reverse way. So now this is our white Autoborn sealer. Again, uh, backing up these colors, these transparent colors, and really pushing them forward to brighten them up. If you guys remember, before that white went on, a lot of this didn't look like it was even painted. It was hard to see actually doing it because you're, you're seeing the transparency, which is a good thing, but that white is really pushing those colors forward. So I'm Chris Harpin with Createx Colors. Hope you guys learned something. We'll see you guys next time.